Well, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, everyone, and happy Saturday afternoon to you. I hope everybody is having a great Saturday and a great weekend so far. My name is Don Terrell, and I want to welcome you to another great episode of The Color of Motion, where I like to say stories come in all shades. And I highlight people of color in diverse backgrounds in the industry of motion graphics, animation, visual effects, cartoons, and comics. This space that I love so well. You know the drill. Say, hey, let me know where you're tuning in from uh, while we get things kicked off. Uh, make sure that you get yourself, uh, first thing, make sure that you get yourself plugged into uh, the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash the color of motion. I want to make sure that you are connected there. Actually, today, the, today's episode is going to be the last episode that's going to be broadcast on my personal page and moving forward. If you're one of those ones that loves to check out the show from Facebook, you're going to have to do it from the group community. So I want to make sure that you are plugged in and don't miss out um, for sure because there's a lot of great stuff planned. So again, facebook.com slash groups slash the color of motion man we got a lot of great new things uh planned for the show uh letting you know of course the group is up and i want you to get engaged because we share a lot of industry news have great conversations and just all around fun um, we have the upcoming website that will be launching pretty soon for the show where you can check out more guest bios um, we're going to be introducing swag items, so you'll be able to get swag items from the uh, website, along with giving all our guests swag bags for being such gracious guests as well. So I definitely want to make sure that, like I said, you are plugged in and don't miss out on all the great things coming up. Uh, what else? The Instagram page is going to be launching pretty soon as well. Um as always, we're looking for uh, sponsors to help us level up the show and continue to make it better. Make sure that you connect with me on all my social channels. I'm getting good at this, pointing in the right direction. Checking out all my social channels. Connect with me, follow with me. I want to make sure I hear from you for sure. And again, I don't want you to miss out on everything that's happening with the show. Uh, like I said, if you are one of those ones that loves to watch out, watch the show from LinkedIn or Facebook, I always highly kind of suggest that you jump on over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Don Terrell. Give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you don't miss out. Um, and you can check out all the other past great episodes from there as well. Um, like I said, we highly encourage uh, people that want to support the show. We have a little tip jar. If you so uh, choose to throw a little in the tip jar, again, it helps me to continue to level up the show. You can scan the barcode or Don Terrell 65 for the cash app. I'll be throwing all of this stuff up again at the end of the show uh, as well. So don't feel bad if you missed out on that because I will be showing it again. Uh, but like I said, we got a lot of great things planned for the show. Um, and I definitely want you to be a part of the community. Uh, what else? Oh, if you do, so choose. Uh, to support the show we always want to give a shout out so we will be giving you shout outs on the show if you uh, sponsor like I said well your name could be here 
Um, but again, it helps us to continue to level up the show and the channel. And we definitely want to give you the props uh, that you so richly deserve. So we want to thank all our viewers and all our all the people that help to continue to make the show uh, the best that it can possibly be. Uh, like I said, I am super excited uh, about this episode. Oh, uh, just as a little heads up, I do apologize. Last week, I had a little technical difficulty with LinkedIn. I can see that we're broadcasting on LinkedIn now. So I had to do a rebroadcast of last week's episode just for my LinkedIn viewers because they had an issue with LinkedIn uh, broadcasting the show. But I see we are up and going on LinkedIn and all the channels. So I'm, I'm happy. What can I say? for sure like i said i have been uh super pumped about this episode like i said we connected i connected with this brother some time ago and just was so blown away and impressed by uh everything that he was doing his work that you know i had to get him on the show and you know and at the time i didn't know that he had worked on hair love you, you know if you know about the oscar winner uh animated short like i think it was not last year but the year before it might have been the year before or last year but if you've seen if you haven't seen hair love you definitely should check it out i will be putting a link in the show notes for sure but it was just an awesome short one oscar um for animated short but i didn't know he had worked on it hair love when I, you know, reached out and connected with him and got him on the show and then saw him on a panel for the people that worked on hair love. And I was like, okay, I didn't know he worked on hair love. My gosh. So we're going to dive into that. Uh, so let's get going. I'm, I'm, like I said, super excited and just super thankful that I'm able to call him friend um, and just in all of just the stuff that's coming out from him. Uh, he has been an animator, a story artist for over 20 years and completed feature work over 10 animated films, including Up, Toy Story 3, and Brave. He storyboarded on Robots, Epic Boss Baby, and The Penguins of Madagascar. And uh, he has a new one that's coming out on Netflix that he just worked on. We're going to talk about that as well. He has an infatuation with storytelling and loves creating and developing new worlds and believes this medium has so much to offer its audience and looks to continually push its boundaries. Um, And before I bring him on, let's check out a little bit of his work. You will be amazed. Uh, the thing is, I kind of have to move. What do you have to more than family? What's more important here? Yeah, that's the name of this game. Uh, <laughs> oh, it. Hey, that's mine. <laughs>
Oh, man. Everybody, I know you recognize all the stuff that you saw there. So many of my favorite uh, animations. Uh, and like I said, I'm just, just geeked to get started. Please, everybody, help me welcome my very special guest and friend, Mr. Everett Downey. What's up? <laughs> Everett. How you doing, Don? Right. Good to see you, man. Good to, Good to see, see you me. again, man. You know I got to bring you in, in <laughs> style, man. You just, I I'm just, it. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> get out of here. Man, we finally did it, right? You, oh, man, mind. yeah. Get on the show for a little bit. I finally did it. Man. Oh, finally man. It. I, like I said, I'm just super excited to finally get you on the show. Um, and like I said, just been so amazed by the work that's been coming from you. Um, and just, like I said, just excited to dive in and talk with you deeper, my brother. Yeah, I'm ready, man. Let's do it. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Well, let me start out. I mean, what kind of initially inspired you when you were younger to kind of go down this path? What was it that kind of sparked your interest in this? Well, you know, I I think starting from a very young age, I mean, I, I was always a big fan of Saturday morning cartoons. I was that kid who was like, kept getting up earlier and earlier in the morning. Like, do they have cartoons at like five? You know, like, I'll get up at six at six, you know, it's five thirty and five. Oh, man, yeah. Looking for more cartoons. So I love Saturday morning cartoons. Um, and, you know, at the time, like when I was, you know, I used to draw all the time when I was a little kid. Yeah. And. When I was little, uh, I used to really be into comic strips. Like I love Garfield. I love um, uh, what was the name of it? Blue County? Yeah, yeah Blue course. County. Yeah, you that one? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, like, Burke Breathed. He was Burke a, Breathed, a, a, man. yeah, man. He was a big one. Uh, yeah, Peanuts love, was my. Peanuts. Like I said, I was just a, a Charles Schultz fanatic. That was just the I, thing. I love Charles that Schultz too. Um, Beetle Bailey, all of Beetle them. Bailey. Yeah, I, I'm dating myself, guys. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Beetle and Bailey. Calvin and Hobbes, too, right? Oh, Calvin yeah, and Calvin and, and Hobbes. And, and I like to say, that was really one of, you know, and I, you know, I would laugh, kind of laugh and smile, but that was really the one of the few comic strips that made me laugh out loud. Oh, wow. Just, yeah. you know, the sheer... Um, skits that and stories that he did it was just such such a hilarious brilliant. comic strip it's brilliant yeah, yeah it was really great and i wanted to be a comic strip artist at first yeah me like, too <laughs> <laughs> i mean i made up like a, my own little like it was kind of like you know a garfield clone you know what but it, it was a guy who ended up he was feeding his squirrel and the squirrel became his pet and they would it would just be a little skit of him doing you know dumb stuff and the squirrel would, would be thinking stuff you know uh so that kind of led me into comics and so my sister was like really big into comics mm. and yeah she was like bigger in comics than i was like my mom had subscribed me to a few comics like you know spider-man i was reading at the time i was reading spider-man dazzler which is like my mom kind of picked dazzler out yeah. like okay <laughs> and then the hulk and mm -hmm. it wasn't until my sister like introduced me to the x-men oh wow that, that is interesting this. yeah mm -hmm. that he is, read the x-men she knew it. she's like you, you should, i think you would like this yeah x-men is i think kind of the that and spider-man were kind of yep. the, the it thing so your would you say your your what role did your parents play like you said you said your mother kind of subscribed you but were they really kind of a uh a cheerleader for you in nurturing your passion for this? Or did you even know that, okay, this was something that I was eventually going to get to, or was it just, Oh, I like comics. I like drawing, but I didn't think this was going to be something that I wanted to do for a living, you know? Yeah. It was kind of interesting. Cause like, you know, I had a single parent, you know, my yeah. dad was around, but like, yeah. you know, he, he had his, he had his stuff to work out. Yeah. But like, my mom, she was always supportive, but she was never like, you know, you know, when I was younger, I, you know, I had this idea in my mind, like, oh, you know what, I'm going to be a veterinarian, like when I was really young, which is so funny. <laughs> and 
she was super excited about that because my mom was like, you know, she was really like a big science. You know, she was she was a chemistry. Yeah. Uh, you know, so she was all excited about that. But I drew all the time, right? I drew all the time, and my big sister's like, you know, you ain't gonna be a veterinarian. You draw too much. <laughs> And it was really funny because my mom was like, I remember like, she she wasn't trying to discourage me, but she was like saying like, oh, it's a lot, it's it's really tough to make money as you know, yeah, an artist. yeah. But she saw me doing it so much, she ended up like supporting me. Yeah, so, you, you know, she she's she, I mean, she's wonderful. Like she saw that was something I wanted to do. Yeah, and she just supported me, like me and, and my decisions. So. No, it sounds like my mom. I mean, she didn't. She she saw my talent and she didn't discourage it. But she right. couldn't kind of wrap her head around, well, how are you going to make a living, you know, doing this? Yeah. You might want to think about a, another career to fall back on just in case. <laughs> yes, I got that speech, too. <laughs> you know, it's like, you can still take science classes just in case the art doesn't work out. And I'm like, no. I'm oh, and, and, and now look at you working at big studios and big films. <laughs> I'm sure they are just, just proud to death from of it. Um, so where did you get, I mean... From school, how, what training did you did you go to art school or, or film school? Additional training did you get? So when I was in high school, I think it was like one of the first. I, I you know I was going to high school in Florida, and, and we were like our schools were one of the first schools to get like AP art, like you know in, in our in, in, in AP art program. Yeah. So you could actually kind of get some art uh, college credits for art. So I jumped on that and. Uh, I ended up like uh, going to, well, I went for a year to uh, School of Visual Arts in New York, actually. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, which was, a, that was amazing. Like, it, that was such a, it was a great college, and um, but you know, New York was expensive, you know. But I was there, I was, I was doing like, you know, I was doing the foundation stuff, so I was, I was learning painting foundations, you know, anatomy foundations, um, like drawing, yeah. like a bunch of drawing foundation stuff, and, but like you know, New York is expensive back in the day. <laughs> it still is. <laughs> it still is. It still is. And my mom's yeah. like, "Yeah, you know, maybe come back for a little while." You know. <laughs> so I ended up transferring to to Chicago to to Columbia College in Chicago. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Where you're doing, um, like I said, you're kind of now in, you know, executive producer, director, kind of slash role. Did you kind of feel like? drawing or and you've done some storyboarding as well was that something that you know you realize well i'm not you know i'm only such so good at art or you know to be a comic because i realized that myself is like as i wanted to be a comic strip you know comic comic artist i uh, you know i like to draw and i think i'm pretty good but you know you see others that are just super amazing at it you know Yeah, you get intimidated, right? You, you know, it's, it was it really interesting because um, the reason I switched over is because I was, you know, when I was in, when I was at SVA, one of my instructors, I, I was, I was, I wanted to be a comic book artist. I wanted to draw on the, the X-Men. I wanted to be an X-Men <laughs> comic book artist. Either X-Men or Excalibur, I had it all planned out. Like, or Alpha Flight. I might even draw Alpha Flight because I love John Byrne. And, um, and then around that time, my instructor would like check out my portfolio and my style that I drew in um, was pseudo kind of um, like the Batman animated series style, kind yeah. of, you know, um, but this is like years before it came out. I was just trying to draw in that way because in my mind, I was like, everyone does like all this cross hatching and like, like details. And I really like animation, but like, uh, you know, one of the comic books, I was like, what if you made a comic book that was closer to like an animated, like that looked like an animated show. And I remember uh, my instructor was like saying like, Ever, you, you should think about going into animation. Like you, you talk about it so much and like your style like really suits it. So he like, they kind of encouraged me. I switched, I switched uh, my majors because of my instructors actually. So, mm-hmm. so, I mean, obviously, you know, what you're doing and what you've done with Pixar and, and you know, Netflix is, is really 3D oriented, but did you, do you like 2D or is that something that kind of would, you know, pique your interest of something that you would want to try or do you just, you like 3D and you like sticking in 3D? 
Well, I love animation. <laughs> I yeah. just love all, all forms of animation. I, I'm most comfortable with CG because I've spent most of my career doing it. Yeah. Fun fun fact, though, like when I started, uh, I was I was studying to be a 2D animator. You mm. know, like when I was in Columbia, I was trying to become a 2D animator. And then I always tell the story, almost every interview. Um, I was in school and I saw Toy Story, the first Toy Story. Yeah. And I literally, the next week, I literally changed majors. I was like, I got to learn CG. I, gotta I, think learn every, I think that did it for everybody. Toy Story just right. started making everybody mass run the 3D and, yeah. and change. And it's funny, too, because the time, the timing was probably perfect because I had a, such a huge traditional um, 2D training and like, yeah. like just art training. Um, and at the time, CG was becoming a bigger thing. And if what you're running into is like, they had a lot of like technicians who knew the software, but didn't have a lot of the art, the art, art yeah. background. Yeah. And then there was the people who had the traditional art background like me, and they didn't want to go into CT. They're like, nah. And I'm, you know, when you're young, but like, you know, college years, you can flip, you can make that switch real easy. Yeah. So when I switched, I had that, that background, that 2d background to support me. Yeah. So people, that's what people were looking for. They were looking for the artists who were kind of like make the transition. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was able to get a job just from that. So. Yeah. I think when, I think that was the big thing when toy story came out that, you know, a lot of traditional animators were just mm -hmm. kind of fearful that, yeah. Oh man, this is just a new medium. And at, like I said, I think, you know, as Pixar went on and everything like that, I think it, it came came to the realization that it really does come down to the story. It's not it really does. so much whether it's 3D, 2D, or whatever. It's yep. more the story of the animation. And I think it, even with CG, you still have to go back to traditional animation style. So the, all the principles still remain the same. Yeah, the principles... They did. They always apply, and it was really funny because you know I le I was learning a lot of different techniques when I was doing to with doing when I was doing CG, and it was it wasn't until I just like you know what I've got my traditional training in 2D. I'm really gonna fight hard to try to put those into my animation, and then anytime I did that, any, like those shots was like far more successful than any other like technique that I use. Yeah. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so what's um like I said, you've been in the industry for a while now. Um, mm -hmm. but what's been kind of the best piece of advice that you've been given that, you know, mm -hmm. really serves still to this day serves you well? Um, oh man, that is a really good question. Well, it's funny because I don't know if I could track it down to any one piece of advice because a lot of people yeah. gave me a lot of really good good insight. I I attribute a lot of my success in my career to one of my mentors in college. Um, his name is Luis Contreras. He was a um, story artist, uh, like a, a head of story over at um, Big Idea, mm -hmm. uh, the guys who do Veggie Tales. Yeah, and he kind of took me under his wing. Like he was like. Like I was boarding over uh, at, at at Big Idea with him because he was actually like my instructor in school. Oh, wow. And he saw my work and he's like, hey, you should try to apply for this job. And I ended up getting a job and working with him. And I think like he just instilled this like passion for storytelling. Like yeah. he was so passionate about storytelling and like how, how, like what stories can like, how they can change people's minds and change people's spirits. And that's what like, I really always look to that spirit as like what like really like maybe fall in love with story because yeah. you know I've and I've done animation and story for years but story is always like you know one of my first loves you know? yeah so yeah yeah I always look back to that and and like I said you you you've been in the industry for a good while and you've kind of touched a lot of different areas is there mm -hmm. one in in now you're kind of in that executive producer director kind of space. Do you feel like that's kind of your space or do you enjoy storyboarding? Do you enjoy doing what other things do you enjoy? Or do you feel like, okay, I'm, I think I feel like I'm getting into my space of 
wanted to direct and really produce, you know. It's it's funny because like, you know, I'm very much like you you know, you know sort of like when you hit something where you're like, this is what I'm supposed to do sort of thing. Yeah. Like and it doesn't have anything to do to at least with me with hubris or like, yeah, I'm all that. It's just like it just feels right, you know yeah. what I mean? So since I've been doing EP and directing, like that feel it like I feel like confident doing that. Like, you know, um I felt confident storyboarding as well. Um, yeah. but um animation, I'm not gonna say I struggle with it, but like it's it's tedious. It was tedious, like for me. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, like I would always and you know, I'd always get the same things like, Man, your blocking's great, you know. That polish, you got to work on that polish, and that's the stuff I was like, oh man, just, yeah. I just, you know, when you're playing it over and over again, and you're looking like at little fingers, and you're trying to figure out, like, it's, to me, I would get, I would just be like, oh my god, I can't do this. You yeah, know? and and that's the thing, like I said, that really amazes me, and I don't think a lot of, I think outsiders don't quite get the 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 real nuance of bringing a character an inanimate character and giving them yes. life and emotions um and it does take a lot of skill to get those little fine nuances it that does. we kind of tend to take for granted um but i think a lot of uh people kind of you know i guess as their journey goes they because i i don't think i have the patience for rigging <laughs> i definitely don't I, although i like rigging it's cool. It's on a cool. you know small level, I don't think I could do it day in and day out. Right. Um, and you kind of find your, like you say, eventually you find your thing of what you really are good at and enjoy doing, whether it's modeling, texturing, mm -hmm. you know, animating, rigging, whatever it is. Um, you you kind of settle into it. Absolutely. And, I, you know, like, it's funny, the thing that, like, you know, EP and directing, like, for me, at least, it's collaborating. So I love collaborating. I yeah. love kind of like helping to bring out the best in the, in the project. So, yeah. you know, um, that's, that's, I get a lot of joy, a lot of gratification out of that. So, gotcha, gotcha. And we talked a little about, a little bit about this, you know, before the show started. But was that a, a, a imposter syndrome? Was that kind oh, of yeah. a, a thing when you, initially started stepping into like i said the ep role director role that you kind of had to really work at i mean even before that i mean it's like as you start to kind of step up in your roles that it, you know you're like what am i doing you know am i doing this <laughs> right you know what i mean like and, and you just kind of got that thing behind your ear where it's just like okay i gotta come in here and i'm gonna have to run this show and there's that voice that says, like, you know, I'm looking at you. You made the wrong decision. <laughs> that's on you. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's something that's just always kind of nagged at you. But, like, I've gotten really good at, like, just ignoring that. And just, like, you know, a lot of it is, like, just looking back at, uh, you know, your successes and stuff. Yeah. And, like, using that to guide you. It's like, well, you know, I did this project and it turned out great. So, yeah. You know, yeah. And then I did this and it turned out great. So, and kind of, silencing that voice yeah but he can get you like sometimes you ain't expecting it, it sneaks <laughs> up on you it's like remember me you know like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you sure you know what you're doing here <laughs> exactly yeah, you can't but like you said it is i think what helps that is like what you said it's a collaborative process yes and so if the work environment and everybody's there and has the 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 notion of, hey, we're all here to, to learn, to make a great product, and we all feed off of each other. That helps the, you know, Absolutely. imposter syndrome, I think, because, you know, I'm pretty sure you've been at some place. Well, I don't know. Maybe you haven't. But, you know, some people make it real uncomfortable about saying, well, you know, I'm not sure, you know, sliding over to the next desk and asking, I'm not sure how, this, you know, this works and sharing their knowledge and their skill with newcomers that come in. I think that's the fear that kind of yeah. drives imposter syndrome. There are newcomers are afraid of asking for help or yeah. feel like they're, you know, going to just make like, I don't belong here, but you know, everybody was in that place at one time or another. Absolutely. It kind of boils down to like, I don't want to be the weak link, right? Like that's kind of where it all comes from. It's like, yeah. I don't want to be the one guy 
that's holding him all this stuff back. Yeah, you know, it's something I I struggled with, but then you know, yeah. It's well, as a di- objective, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. as a director in an EP, do you have uh, what's your process like when you're directing something? Do you or do you have a process or do you have kind of a philosophy that you kind of go by as a in the director's role? You know what's funny is just like I I try to make sure that I have clarity, you know, just with myself, you know what I mean? Um, so like, you know, a lot of what a lot of what a director kind of brings to the table, it's like, hey, you know, I've got an idea of how I want this I want to present this and you really kind of have to walk yourself through it and, and start to kind of be able to kind of poke your hole, poke holes at things. Yeah. Um, really put a critical ear, like really listen. And there's also, it's, it's, it's so crazy because there's also like a confidence that you've got to project, but I find that you can't get that confidence until you're, you, you have confidence in the material. So it's like, if I'm, say I'm working on a story, I, I'm, I'm really pushing at every like at all the different sequences and all the different scenes and i thought like, how do i really feel about this yeah could this be better i'm showing friends um and colleagues that i respect and say like hey what do you think and you get feedback and the most important thing is when you get that feedback uh there's the note and then there's the note behind the note right and that's that's like a super important thing that i don't know if a lot of people hmm. uh it's hard to kind of to grasp because it's, it's it's a tough concept so like Don, you, you you tell me something. You say you share something with me, and I go like, "Hey, you know what? Like in, in your story, this character needs you know needs something more dramatic to happen to him. Like you know, maybe he. I think he should you know uh, have a near death experience. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm telling you what you're like you should do in your story, but that's not really my job. Yeah, it's someone to get feedback. Your note is to go and what you're supposed to do is listen to that and go like, okay, cool. So he's not feeling like the stakes are high enough for this character in this moment. How do I do that? And then you got to look at the story and see if there are opportunities for the story to like, and the characters to like do, to, to challenge your, that character or whatever. Gotcha. So gotcha. That, I've seen, so that's kind of your, yeah, it's kind of your job. That's how I try to approach them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I make uh, it airtight. And, uh, and along that line, what would you say are, would you say are like the top three characteristics that would make a, a, a good director and a great director? Uh, I definitely think uh, uh, collaborations is big. I just think that's a huge part of piece of it. And like knowing, knowing your strengths and weaknesses and like knowing what you're good at and knowing what you're not good at. Yeah. And like um, finding, finding the people, finding like, you know, whatever you're not good at, finding the people to help you in the yeah, area. So that's kind of gap. like, <laughs> right. Like that's kind of your job. It's like, yeah, hey, you know what? I'm not good at lighting or I'm not good at like, you know, story yeah. even like, and finding someone that you can, that you can work with and you, and, and you're on the same wavelength and that will support you. Yeah. Um, another, so collaboration, um, vision. I mean, you know, like I, I, you know, I don't really subscribe to like the auteur where it's like, I have a six single vision, <laughs> you must, but I do think you've got to know what you want to say. Like, mm-hmm. I think that is so important. Um, and it's also, it's also really important. Like if you, if you're going to get me for the job, right? Like you've got to make sure that like, and I, I don't know if people do this where it's like, what's this guy trying to say? And does that work for the movie that I'm trying to get him to direct on? You know, yeah. and it's like, so if you have a movie and you're, it's a movie about like, um, you know, acceptance, you know, a kid, like, like a kid ex- ex- being accepted and you bring somebody who's like, Oh, I want to tell, you know, a story that's about loss. That's not going to line up. Right. Yeah. That's going to, so, and that, but that's really hard. That's really hard to do. You only can get that like by talking to someone and like really getting to know them. So collaboration vision. And then the third thing I think is really important is um, the ability to, I think you just got to be uh, like thick. You got to be thick skinned. But, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because people are going to come at you, and like yeah. it's funny because like you know sometimes you give people feedback and like they, they react to it. And, yeah, take, don't take it the right way as constructive criticism, or really that 
getting them to think, hey, it's not about you. It's about the project as a whole. Project. You know? Exactly. And, and I take it one step beyond, Don, where it's like, you know what? Like, you might not like what I'm saying, but I'm your friend and I want you to succeed. Yeah. You put that out into the world. There's a bunch of people who don't care about you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> who are going to either See, buy is, tickets or not. What is this crap tickets. you're bringing me there? Right. <laughs> but you can either listen to me or listen to them later. So. Oh, man. But along those lines, what would you say, uh, in line with what you were just talking about, what would you say are your biggest strengths and what would you say your 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 weak, your weak <clears throat> biggest weaknesses are? Oh, man. I don't know if I can tell my weaknesses. <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm just kidding. Uh, I actually think that, 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 that I'm really good at collaborating. Like I said, I, I, yeah. I, I like to do it, and I think I'm really good. And I'm, I, I'm really good. I think that I'm really good at like. I think I'm actually really good about knowing my <laughs> knowing my weaknesses and what I'm not great at. And, yeah. Um, I think I, I'm not going to say that, that like like these this is like that I'm super weak at, but some things that I, that sometimes I struggle on is um, clarity. I think sometimes yeah. you know where it's just like breaking things down. Like I can I I, I can definitely get there. Yeah. But like I think anytime I've seen like early anything that's early in the in development that I do or whatever. Yeah. The, the notes are like, okay, cool. We just need to make this clear between these characters. So yeah. again, that's something I really focus on now. I, yeah. I'm saying, I, I think I'm a lot better than I was. Yeah. Um, so obviously there's a time period before, uh, between when you're actually approached with a project and then you actually start on the production that you have, like I said, you get that time to get the clarity, whether it's with the writer or, or, uh, you know, other people involved. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. Like now that I think about it, like, I think when it comes to projects, like if it's something that like came from me, I, I have a lot more agency. Yeah. So, so, but if it's a lot of times, if I'm being put on a project, um, I think I might struggle with that because a lot of times I'm like, well, this is your thing. And I've had people tell me, no, no, like you take it over because if they're given to you, you got to take it over. Yeah. And, and I have a real problem. Like I know it's in my brain, but it's like, yeah. like, Hey, I'm giving, Hey, Don, you're, you're going to be, you know, directing Don's, you know, Don's screenplay. Yeah. I'll be like, well, that's Don's thing. I don't want to mess it up. But it's yeah. like, no, that's kind of your job to get in there. And, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. find it, you know. Yeah. Well, do you? I mean, do you prefer? I mean, obviously, everything as a whole, you love it, you enjoy doing. Whether it's some uh, project that that's brought to you or a project that you're pitching, but what's? I mean, for you, what's the kind of challenge in say pitching your own project and and bringing your own project to to fruition? Pitching your own project project is is. Just, very difficult especially like in a world where like ip is king right like yeah, the, yeah. The things that are out there like that's going to take precedence because it's tried and it's true but then you get to this thing where it's like well you know like you know you got to walk that line between ip and like you, someone's got to put out the new stuff you know what I mean? that's you know you're going to get fatigued there's going to be ip fatigue or yeah whatever. so um i always do better if it's something i come up with like cause I, that's just me i want to be able to put new ideas and, and new concepts out there that said you know like i i'm you know I, I think i think the most important thing is to kind of identify what you connect with right yeah. so it's just like you know for example like i would jump on a spider-man project in in a heartbeat right but if someone said like hey you know what like can you help us like reboot monchi cheese i'd be like I can't do that because I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, I don't yeah, have that connection. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm not, and I, that's not even me bashing on Lodgy Cheese. Like I remember that. Like yeah, but just book. like you said, but it's just, I just don't have that connection. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, and and along that point, like I said, uh, and and like I had told you before, I was just you know one kind of caught off by surprise that you had worked on you know Hair Love, but was that one of those? projects where like I said you just were when you were approached by for it you just were ex was excited to to work on that kind of project oh yeah 100 percent. like I was excited about you know when I first saw the Kickstarter 
like you know i was like oh snap i saw it like pop up my on my feed and i like contributed like right away you know like i reached out to like hey you guys ever need any help and you know when that came back around you know like that was just kind of you know happenstance you know what i mean it just happened <laughs> everything like aligned perfectly Perfect, right? so i was so excited to work on that you know i jumped at the opportunity yeah were you surprised by the the i mean it oscar winner were you surprised by the upswell of just how oh, it man. just kept going and going kept and then... going well it's funny because like you know when i saw it and then i you know like when we started working on it it's one of those things where like oh people are gonna like this because you know it's, it, it, it's it's a it's a sweet story it's a beautiful story that yeah. like resonates with a lot of people character no, you know marginalized characters you don't yeah. get that spotlight but just kind of like seeing how it just kept going and and the, like the swell of like support it just kind of blew my blew my mind like as we i remember getting closer and closer we're like I don't know. I think we might get a nom. I don't know. I don't know. You got the nom. We're like, oh, we got the nom. Like, and it just kept going. We're just like, I think we might. I don't know. I don't want. Because I didn't want to think about it. I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah, want to think yeah. about it. I don't want that pressure, you know. So it was it incredible. Amazing. And, and again, everybody, if you haven't checked, and I'm going to put the link in uh, the show notes, but you should definitely check out Hair Love. Like I said, it, it Oscar winner. Um, such a sweet, like you said, uh, amazing, sweet story. Um, I, I'm curious, outside of the Oscars, uh, the Oscar win, what do you think the biggest impact that Black uh, or Hair Love had, you know, just on um, on the general public? You know, it, the timing was like perfect, right? There was like, you know, I think there was a swell of like just people wanted to see more stories like this yeah there was um i think at the time there was like lots of stories of um discrimination against kids here in school yeah like, yeah, yeah yeah you know and like positive uh like uh you know imagery of yeah. like uh, like and the will like the wanting to have that and then like also wanting to have more diverse stories you know which yeah. continued like yeah. over the next year and a half right yeah. and kind of like exploded with george floyd right like, yeah. that's just i mean that's all it, to me that was all part of that big wave, wave. that's leading to now i think we're going to be really um satisfied to see a lot of these stories that are going to be coming out there's a lot of really cool stuff oh yeah and and again we kind of talked a little bit about this um the new project that you worked on that's coming out maya in the three mm -hmm. um which is another uh, link that I'm going to try and put in the show notes, but it's an amazing uh, animation coming out from Netflix, um, kind of from an Aztec uh, culture point of view. And Meso it's just, Mesoamerican. Yeah, Mesoamerican, just so amazing. It's such a great animation work. I'm just, I can't wait for it to come out myself. Um, yeah, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And how long was was that project, uh, just time wise of working on it? So that that was an incredible project. It's it's being directed by um, Jorge Gutierrez, who directed Book of Life. Amazing director. Yeah. Like he he asked me to come work on. Um, it's a, like a mini series. He asked me to come work on it. Um, I was actually like finish up working at Sony. And he invited me over. He's like, hey, I'm over at Netflix. You should join me. We're looking for story artists. I know you normally do feature stuff, but we're doing like a mini series and we want to kind of like walk the line between feature and series. Yeah. And we think we would think that you would do like be a really great member for the team. I love Jorge. So like I jumped at the opportunity, you know, um, one of the first times I think I've, I've had like a uh, person of color as, as a director. So yeah. I was, you know, like for me, that was huge. And he was just super supportive. Like I loved his the vibrance that he had, like oh, the man. story yeah. that he was trying to tell. It's right? amazing. Yeah, like and that team, the team itself, I can't gush enough. You can tell. Like <laughs> the, the team, the team was fantastic that I worked with. So I, I think I started that one. I want to say maybe uh, August of 2018 is when I started that. Okay, and wow. I ended up working on it for like 
Well, maybe about a year. Yeah. Maybe about yeah. a year. So. And, and again, we kind of talked a little bit about this, uh, you know, before the show that, you know, you're so in the project at the time that you don't, it's not until it's released, which is, you know, it could be a year, year and a half, maybe even mm-hmm. two years before it's, you know, finally done. Is it hard kind of keeping that, I guess, kind of continuity when you're only working on bits at a time and you don't see the project as a whole until it's done? You know, um, it depends. <laughs> it depends on the production that you're on. Like, not for Maya because, you know, it's nine episodes. We we had, like, they had scripts, so we were able okay. to read all nine, so we know where it's headed, we know where it's going. And as a story team, I worked on, like, yeah, I think I worked on every episode. Um, so, you know, when you get your, when you get your scene or whatever signed, you know what's ha- what's before it and what's after it. And Jorge's great about, like, communication, you know? So, mm-hmm. you know, the continuity was an issue. I have been on projects that, like, you know, they keep keep things to, to the chest a little bit more. Yeah. They don't give out the information as readily. So it's like, how does this scene connect to the next one? Well, uh, we'll see <laughs> if we can get you the, 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 the script. And you're like, okay, you know. Um, Oh, it should be man. challenging. It should be challenging. Like I said, I'm excited to see it uh, come out for sure. Um, and kind of uh, along the lines of what we were just talking about um, with Hair Love um, and obviously, um, you know, Lion Forge, which I was trying to get. Carl, if you're watching this, I'm still <laughs> trying to get you on the show. You know, I'm, I'm still going to get you on. Uh, do you feel like... Um, do you think there's a space for uh, black animation studios and, and, and not just black animated studios, but just diverse studios, whether it's Latino or, or Indian American, as far as really getting to that Pixar DreamWorks level? Or do you feel like that, you know, because we don't have like the distribute, we, or are we still going to always be tied to having to go to Disney and studios like that and Warner because they have the distribution for it. Yeah. I mean, distribution is like probably the biggest, that's probably the biggest challenge, right? Yeah. Like, um, so, I mean, I definitely think it can happen, you know, like, I, you know, I mean, obviously, my thought is, obviously, with companies like Tyler Perry Studios, Harpo Studios, mm-hmm. they've got the kind of clout, I guess, mm-hmm. that could get there a lot quicker than, say, other studios. But, I mean, I think, do you feel like that's obviously the biggest sticking point of, you know, getting to that level? I think, yeah, I think it's really diff- I think it's really difficult. It's not impossible, um, but... You know, like if you're speaking like, say, black owned or yeah. like, you know, like Latino owned or whatever, like I think there's the, the biggest um, challenges I think are going to be like when you're talking about that, you're talking about building an infrastructure, right? Like and you want to build an infrastructure in animation. It should be filled at the top with, with people who have a lot of experience um, in, in, that, in that industry from my, from my just because you know, animation is not cheap, you know, um, and, you know, there's just a lot of things that you should know. Yeah. If you, you, you just need that breadth of knowledge, right? So I look at it and I, and I think like, okay, so, you know, in the industry, it's an industry that has been like woefully like low on black, you know, and diverse people yeah. talent, yeah. you know what I mean? And talent at a certain level. Like, I think it'll happen eventually. Cause like now, like from when I started, like, you know, I was usually the, the only guy in the room and now I look around and it's like, it's a lot more diverse. So, yeah. you know, it's going to take a little bit, but I think it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously. Um, for you, I mean, like you just said, obviously when you started, you were kind of like the lone, lone one. Was that your biggest challenge? Um, being a black man navigating the industry, um, as you were going along, just kind of being the, the lone kind of person of color there? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, 
yeah, I guess it was a challenge, but a, like it was just kind of like a social challenge, right? Or yeah, like, oh, I'm the only dude, cool, you know. Yeah. Um, but but you know, when I was when I was when it was early in my career, a lot of times I was like, I'm just trying to survive, right? I'm yeah. just trying to keep my head above water. So, it, but you know, once I got into the rhythm and and and, and really felt like, okay, I feel like I can kind of hold my own. I really, you know, you do kind of take a look at the landscape and you're like, then you look at it like, man, like we could be doing better. Yeah. And then you start thinking like, how can we do that? How can we do better? So, you know, I think around that time, I started feeling that way. That's when, you know, I, I'm always like, I'm going to try to do like the best that I can do with the tools that are given me. So yeah. like a lot of times, you know, like I'm trying to highlight black talent. I'm trying to like, Hey, you see this person thing? This is, this this guy's really dope. Yeah. I've heard the pitches from these people. Like you say, you're looking for people to tell stories. These, this guy's a story artist at like Cartoon Network. This guy's a story artist. You know, this, you know, um, this woman's a writer over at Nickelodeon. Yeah. And doing dope stuff. So like, I think I try to just be a spotlight. On yeah. That. Yeah. Be an advocate for it for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, and I, I kind of like to say this is such a great time for, for content creators because you, there, there's so many channels out there that, you know, you may not necessarily have to immediately go to uh, Netflix because you have YouTube and all the other channels that are starting to come up. Do you feel like um, that helps the country, content creator in getting their oh, yeah. content and, and IP out there? I think so for sure. I mean, like now there's like so many like outlets and venues, like, you know, before, like, I want to say maybe 10 years ago, you know, you, they didn't really have crowd sort sort yeah, crowdfunding, crowdfunding. You know, and that's, that's huge. Right. Um, even if it is just like, Hey, I want to do crowd to crowdfund a pilot or whatever. Um, now the tools are like a lot more robust. Like, so like when you see something like, Oh, blender, yeah. like it's free that you can just download, you know? Yeah. So, I, you know, all me, and, you know, me, I'm going to get together with me and my college buddies and we're going to sit down and we're going to create content that goes straight for, to YouTube or goes straight to like, you know, TikTok. Yeah. Um, there's so many ways that you can do it now. Yeah. Yeah. And in some, some, in, in some ways you can get like a, you know, better or bigger exposure you know when i think of tiktok and like yeah you do cool stuff on that yeah. like it becomes viral like and and i think and i tell people that i mean it's like you get enough following studios like netflix and disney are going to come looking for you because they're yeah. doing the same thing that we're all doing they're scouring the internet and looking yeah. at the talent that's out there exactly exactly no yeah. And I always give, like I said, uh, Netflix a lot of prop, that more than, bigger than most what they're doing, more than most studios do. You, what do you feel else that s- studios can do to kind of you know make diversity even more, really step up even more? Because like I said, they all like I said while you, while I like to say. You hate it was because of the social unrest and things that were going on in the mm-hmm. climate that they finally started to take this um, step. But glad that they are taking this step. But what more do you feel like, you know, can be done and should be done? Well, I mean, you know, we're running. Yeah, I hear this, con- this you know, have this conversation a lot, right? Um, to me, like, you know, I, I think that it's, um, some people say that it's, oh, it's a complicated problem. I, I say that it's not. I say that it's actually, like, uh, some problem. It's just not easy, yeah. right? So, you know, I think that one of the first things, like, more black execs would be great. I know that that's already, I'm already seeing yeah. more black execs, which I think is fantastic. Um, because there is, like, no matter what we might want to say, it's a different culture in, like, you know, something that, like, you know, if a white executive is cooking something and they feel that, like, oh, that doesn't work or that, you know, they may not, un- they just might not understand the culture. Yeah. You know, like, no, no, trust me, that's going to hit. Like, you know, <laughs> trust me, you know. Um, and, and that was funny that you said that because that was the one thing, like, uh, when I saw Soul, it was yeah. like, okay, that barber scene is like, 
they nailed it. I, that's the typical, yeah. you know, that was the tip, the typical black barber shop kind mm-hmm. of setting, and you know, it just resonated with it. So you get how having the right people that can give the right voice to the scene yeah. really does make a difference in yeah, how it comes impact. across. You know, yeah, big impact, right? No. Yep. We're going to throw, uh, like I said, a little, that came in a little large uh-huh. there, uh, for sure. Let me scale this down. Mr. Darnell Johnson, we appreciate <laughs> you uh, tuning in there. Don't want to have to get ready. You want to stay ready with work to show. That's true. You that always have true. to be ready. And, and that's why I tell, and that's why I tell people um, that you don't have to necessarily wait. I think that's the thing. Students are so scrambling to get into Pixar, to get into Disney, yep. to get into these studios. And that's why I say, you don't have to wait. There's channel, you got YouTube, you got places out there to really get your content out. If you so want to, to make a big bond to where they come to you now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, well, first I want to say a uh, shout out to Darnell. Hey, what's up, Darnell? <laughs> we just connected on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Story great guy. Yeah. He's great. <laughs> Um, so, uh, one thing I will say that's kind of tip, like that is kind of connected to that is like, you know, with me, I always got my storyboard, like gigs from yeah. my personal work, you know what I mean? Because I was doing professional stuff and then like in the interim, sometimes when I'm between, between jobs or like if I'm rapping on a job yeah. and like, I don't feel, I'm like, oh, I need another piece like to strengthen my portfolio, I will just do a personal thing. Yeah. And I, I, I found that every time I did like little personal pieces, those always got me jobs. So yeah. Yeah. like if I'm, if I'm somebody out there right now, you know, I've got like, I'm doing little, you know, I'm posting, I'm, you know, obviously I'm going to be posting images on my Instagram or whatever, yeah. but I'm also going to probably do like, like little animatics to show and show you how those kids, I, I would cut those together yeah. so you can get an idea of my sense of humor. And yeah. Yeah. My, I, and I think it's enough. such a, like I said, it's such a easy way to get noticed. And I, like I said, ha- have seen so many examples of just, you know, killer stars now that just got found mm-hmm. on the internet because they were yep. posting their own content or doing their own thing. And I like to use him as an example because he is a, a super talented, uh, super talented uh, visual effects guy. Uh, Andrew Kramer, um, he does a lot of uh, After Effects. To, but when he started, he was just posting After Effects tutorials on his website. And J.J. Abrams saw his stuff and just mm-hmm. called him up. And now he's doing all these trailers and, and intros mm-hmm. and effects for J.J. Abrams because he was just posting his content online and somebody mm-hmm. saw it. So that's why I say it's such a great time for content creators because there's so many channels out there to get your, your work seen. For sure. Yeah. And we're going to take a look while we, while we're on that subject, we're going to take a look at some of uh, Everett's stuff here. Like I said, this, yeah. some of his personal uh, oh work, such great <laughs> stuff. Um, and do you, do you still kind of give yourself time to, you know, I know you're busy doing a lot of Netflix stuff and directing yeah. and, and all this stuff. Do you still try and find time to kind of take those odd moments of sketching and drawing and doing, you know, your own I, personal I things? try to. I try to, but, like, I, you know, I'm so busy these days. It's funny because, like, you know, this is all, a lot of this is from my 365 um, Supers project that I really try to draw superhero every day for a year. <laughs> Which was like it was just a creative exercise um and like you know i had a time limit like i couldn't spend more than a certain amount of time on it yeah yeah to move on um and i look back and i'm like man these are great um part of me wants to go back and like oh man i'd love to like do another take on these that's just artists you know they're perfectionists right now yeah 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 well do you think that's a now i can tear that up do you think that's a thing that helps uh only serves to help you giving yourself those kind of challenges I think it does, like, because, you know, at the time when I started that, I was actually, uh, I was in a creative, like, block, I had, a, I had an artist block. Yeah. And 
just doing that was like so amazing. Like it, so much good stuff came out of that, you know. Awesome, awesome. And like I said, oh, we so are coming. getting a lot of uh, feedback here, Mister No Parky. I okay. appreciate you. Everett is a damn good art. I hey. Yeah, we're good. Oh, Why do you think I got more? I only have on the best. I try and only have on the best. But no, I I can totally concur with you there. Uh no parking. I appreciate that. He is an awesome, talented. And like I said, you need to I don't know if like I said, if you've checked out Hair Love, you need to check out Hair Love. If you got Netflix, stay tuned. When is it supposed to be released? Uh which one, Maya or Maya. Maya and the three. Because I saw the trailer, but I, I don't think it's released on Netflix just yet. Not yet. I want to say it's next month, but I'm probably getting that right. I thought okay. I was wrong. I thought it was the end of September. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So, uh, Mr. Raul, of, uh, another former guest on there. So true. Andrew, Andrew was always sharing for years. I think, like, great. Yeah, great visual. Just, mm -hmm. I, I love his tutorials. I've always followed his tutorials and, and just. Mm -hmm a super great uh, person that gave back, which I think is what helped him even more because he was just sharing, sharing, sharing with the community for sure. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Raul again. Hair Love. Yeah, Hair Love was solid. It was, <laughs> like I said, it, was, it really was uh, something. Uh, I think the ending for me was so unexpected because I was just thinking it was, about, you know, the father struggling with his daughter's hair and then when he came in to his wife and what she was... I, and I'm sorry if I'm killing it for y'all, but you know, it. it was just... Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if I'm killing it. But go check it out. Like I said, the ending for me was what was really unexpected. You know, was, you know one thing you, you kind of brought up about, like, Andrew and Sherry, like, definitely don't be afraid of sharing stuff as well. Yeah. Like, I mean, that kind of, like, that kind of lends towards, like, imposter syndrome, too. And I remember thinking, like, ah, you know what? Why should I put out anything? Like, I got friends who could do this better. So, like, yeah. I'm not going to, you know. Um, but then, you know, I would, I would get friends who would, like, yell at me. It's like, man, like, you know, everybody has their own perspective. Like, you know, like, in, it, it by sharing stuff, like, especially if you're going to share tutorials. Yeah. Like, teaching, I think, is really great. And Yeah. Because you wow. learned along the way. And that's what he exactly. was saying. I mean, that was exactly. his way of learning the software. He just put yep. it out to, hey, if you know you know of a better way of doing it, I would love to know. Or this is how I kind of thought about how to create something. And like exactly. I said, it just makes you better. Yeah. 100%. Uh, let me throw another one up here. Well, we're getting a lot of comments. I, like I said, I <laughs> love this, man. I definitely saw Hair Love. At least three or four times on YouTube, beautiful short. Yeah, it is. It's such an amazing, amazing short, and that's why I said I was. Which I guess I always was kind of uh, uh, curious how the Oscar process went. I mean, was because I know some movies kind of lobby for it as far as like marketing it and push it, and. You know, it's others, it's just kind of a groundswell of it's just such a popular, you know, unexpected thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for you, like I said, do you think it was kind of a combination of both? Or do you feel like it was just, it just had such a groundswell from the Kickstarter point on up that, I, you know, the Oscar committee had to just, they couldn't ignore it? Well, I will say it had a great groundswell. And I'll also say that, like, Matthew Cherry and his team, you know, those guys are really, they, they know their stuff. Because, like, you know, they were able to, like, really, you know, like, he spirit, like, it just was his idea. He yeah. spearheaded it, you know, and he was able to, like, just really kind of, like, ride the social media wave in terms of, like, getting, it, like, eyes on it. Yeah. And I, I think that because it was so topical and because it was, like, a, uh, like a hot topic and you know, it, it touched so many people. I think it just kind of turned those like eyes. So it, and when it got picked up by Sony, you know, um, that just kind of like increased. Increased it. Yeah, got the song you know? ball rolling even more. Yeah. And then Lion Forge joined. And so like, it just got, it just had crazy momentum, crazy momentum. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm curious, uh, like I said, everybody, if you're just jumping on, we're having a uh, great conversation uh, with my friend and guest, Mr. Everett Downey, super talented executive producer, director of animation with Netflix. Like I said, um, again, I will be, you know, sharing all his info, uh, in the show notes. You definitely want to make sure that you check out his, uh, stuff. Um, what advice would you kind of give somebody considering coming into the industry? What would you tell them? Oh, if you're, if you're coming into in industry, that's, that's that a, would want to do that has thinking about doing what you want that you're doing. Yeah. What what kind of advice would you give them? If you're coming in fresh, like if you don't know much about the industry, the first thing I would tell you is like definitely do your research because and there's so much, right? You know, like you can actually like there's a lot of different websites you can check out. There's a lot of different like videos on YouTube that you can learn about how, how the industry how it works. Definitely learn the history of the industry as well because like yeah. that is just it's it's just it's always good to know about like um how the industry kind of came to be and like yeah like who's moving like it was really funny like i, I sat down recent like fairly recently i want to say it was a couple years back and there was just a couple books that i just read about like history of disney and history of dreamwork and stuff and there's so much that i didn't realize like Oh my God, the people I know who are like part of like, you know, his, the history of it, which yeah. I mean, obviously it makes sense, but like, you don't think of it in that context. Um, I'd also say like, uh, definitely like, you know, learn about the process itself. Like, and there's a lot of videos that kind of do an intro to animation, what's it, what, what it's all about. Um, and you know, school, school is something is like, you know, there's a lot of really great schools that you can go to, um, you can research one, on which one, um, works for you. What's, what's more convenient for you, like going to physical school, like going to like Cal Arts or, or SCAD or Ringling yeah, or, yeah. or maybe an online or taking online classes. Yeah. Sometimes both <clears throat> is best, you know, and we've had, and I've had this conversation before with some others. Do you think, um, because like I said, I'm an alum from the art Institute and yeah. I typically tell people, you know, you probably could find much more targeted um, and obviously less expensive than a four year school <laughs> going to some of these online schools like Nomen and Animation Mentor. Do you feel yeah. like, you know, that's, you know, obviously, especially with COVID and us not being able, able to go to school, do you feel like those are starting to going to be a, a bigger groundswell in a better place because they're and, and I heard somebody at and it, it was interesting because he was saying the same thing um, but he was uh, uh, I saw him on a panel at Com Houston Comic Palooza and he was talking mm. about the fact that he, he would pr he preferred the online because the instructors were actual people that were working in yeah. studios at that, you know, ongoing. And that was my yeah. thing as well. That was my appeal for looking at, uh, on a lot of the online schools because they were actually working industry yeah. professionals. Do you feel like that's a thing that's better than say a four year school or, or the traditional route or what? I definitely think it's like, you know, schools like animation mentor and, and, some of the ones you mentioned, I think those are great because they are more targeted. Like the and you know, like you said, like the the, the they're working professionals that are running these classes. Um, you can find that at, at some of the other schools, but like if you don't have that access and like they can, some of them can be kind of expensive. Yeah, like yeah. it's not a bad idea to like look at some of those online schools and just get that targeting and targeted learning, right? Like, yeah. um, because you know because animation is so specialized, right? Like, yeah. In, and there's something about someone who's working in industry who knows the ins and outs. They can kind of like, like, present to you like you know the basics of animation and everything, but also give you an idea of like the industry as well. Yeah, like, like a all, like an actual studio working studio environment, you know, mm -hmm. or, or production pipeline of what it would be, as opposed to okay, I'm sitting at which I guess you kind of get it. You know, and, and they said that, like, at uh, SCAD, you know, they kind of mm -hmm. give you yeah. that. But, you know, working in, I think, an actual 
type of production pipeline to, to say, hey, this is what I would be doing in this position and working with the team and working to get a project done, I think is such an invaluable thing. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, uh, you know, I think it gives it a, a wider reach for people yeah. that aren't necessarily able to come over to this country to get yeah. to go to SCAD or Full Sail or whatever yeah. the, the, the school is, they can now get so much uh, more you know, learning from, like I said, Animation Mentor, you know, Nomen and those type of schools, online schools. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you got to kind of evaluate, right? Like what, like your, your position, like what you can and can't do. Right. Like, like you said, like, you know, if you can go to SCAD, you can go to, to one of these other schools that that's a great experience. And, you know, that's going to be, uh, you're, you're going to be able to get like a lot out of that. But if you can't, like if you said, like you said, if you're in a different country or if you're in a situation where like, Oh, right now I can't move, you know, or, you know, yeah. um, you, you don't want to be in a physical like environment because of COVID or whatever. Yeah. All that schools are the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to that point, um, and I've had the, the pleasure of, of talking with a lot of international, uh, you mm -hmm. know, animators and content creator. Obviously you were on King's Tune, you know, the, the panel for the King's Tune Festival. Yeah. King, yeah. uh, you know, Raul is from Jamaica and that industry mm -hmm. and, and obviously Africa. I've talked, yeah. had a lot of African uh, content creators in that industry yeah. over there to the point where I think, you know, Netflix and a lot of the other studios are starting to build locations over there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So do you Please. see that, like I said, a lot more of the international talent starting to really start to come up? Oh, man, uh, for sure. You know, like, you know, the, the production that I'm running right now, we have a good number of people who are like, you know, uh, working out of Africa, and like in, in other other countries, you know, yeah. like it's, it's definitely becoming more more of a thing. And yeah. now that like. COVID's kind of shown us like we can work this way. Yeah. Um, I think I think we might see a lot more of that. Like yeah. people working yeah. remotely. Yeah. Like, no, well, do you and to that point, do you pref well obviously it's better to, you know, kind of work together, but I mean, did you find that challenging kind of working remotely? Or and do you prefer like the collaborative in person type of environment? You know? You, you know, um, you, you know, I, I actually, we were actually really able to like navigate it pretty well. Like, you know, <laughs> um, because like, you know, like the tools, I think were, were pretty good on like Zoom and, yeah. and, and and Google. And um, so it, it hasn't been bad, you know, we've actually been able to manage it. But that said, we also did it like from the start, we were like, we've been working in COVID. We like to joke that, you know, we're like Bane, we were born in the darkness, you know, like, so, you know, what I mean? <laughs> we're used to working in COVID, you know. <laughs> yeah, for all, you did, all you Batman fans that didn't catch that, <laughs> I was born in the darkness, you know. Oh, man. But, yeah, I think there's something, like I said, you know, while COVID did show that it's, you know, studios are more than capable of creating, you know, work or working remotely. I think there is something, you know, to that in studio collaborative process where you can just slide over to the next guy's desk and, Hey, this, what do you think of this shot I'm working on type of thing? Um, and getting that kind of impersonal feedback, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, in a time when it's cool to do that, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm all for it, you know? Uh, so I just want everybody to be comfortable. Like yeah. I don't want, I don't want anybody to like, I don't want to make anybody come into an environment that they don't feel comfortable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's true. That is, that yeah. is true. Um, Mr. Jerry Bryce, I don't know whether he could answer this cause this is a current thing that he's working on, but Mr. Jerry Bryce is what's the creative inspiration, which is another great, uh, I saw, I've seen some of the, the artwork and stuff or that's a super cool idea. I'm just super excited to see when that comes out as well. Uh, but, but, in creative inspiration behind the new his new series, My Dad the Bounty Hunter on Netflix. It's like I said, that's gonna be another great fun <laughs> animation. 
Uh, yeah, you know, I can I can probably say what's kind of already out there. You know, I, what little I can I say, I, I'll say it was like it's kind of like a love story to like sci-fi, but it's also a love story to like yeah. you know black family. So I think it's going to be uh, this is but this is fun. written. This isn't yours. This is somebody else's, or is this your idea? This is my idea. Okay, yeah. okay, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, me, and, me, really me and my create me and my creative partner Pat Harpin. He okay. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and to that point, um, did you was it an easy process finding a collaborative partner to work with? You know, on I mean, it's like I said, putting it together and an idea, pitching it, going through that whole process is, is it really is big. I mean, is it? Was it a hard thing to find somebody that is in sync with you and you know, yep. you were both just confident in going to Netflix and pitching it? And did you feel like, you know, that was something, you know, Netflix would just grab onto? Well, I mean, it's kind of like dating, right? It's like, you never know, you know what I mean? Like in, in, you know, I've talked to other, like, you know, I've, I've worked with other creatives, try to collaborate with them and, you know, like it's, it's really hard to find somebody that you're kind of in sync with. And so, you know, when I sat down with Pat and when we first started coming up with the idea, like it was like ping pong, you know, it was like, dak, 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 our ideas usually, and it just kept building on each other and getting better and better. And, and as we were doing it, we were kind of like, this is early, early days when we first started really doing it. We kind of stopped and we looked at each other and we're like, I think this is really good, man. Like, you know, so. Um, uh, but had but you we worked had no with idea. him? We had no idea. But I mean, had you had a, have you had a long relationship with him and did, you know, you knew, you know, <laughs> worked early on with him or was this kind of a fairly new relationship, you two coming together? We, we worked together uh, while we were at Sony. So like, I, I guess it was fairly new. We'd known each other for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, we worked on one or two projects together. Yeah. You know, uh, but I mean, we kind of shared like our, our, our love of storytelling. Like we would always like kind of grab coffee and just kind of talk about like, oh, yeah, man, yeah. you know, it would be great. This would be fun to tell a story about that. This would be fun to tell a story about that. And just kind of like, at some point we just like, you know, decide like, man, you know, I like your ideas. I like your ideas, man. We should like try, like, you know, we should come up with something. So it's very organic. Yeah. I mean? like, yeah. So w at what point did you feel like y'all were ready? Hey, we're ready to take this. Or, and, and did you initially have that in mind as you were doing it? You're doing it to take it to, say, a company like Netflix to, to produce it. And at what point did you find, both of you finally say, hey, this is, I think we're, we got this at a point where, you know, we can take it. Did you have stuff already animated or did you do, do storyboards and pitch them the storyboards or what? You know, we just we just had the idea basically like we had we had mapped the whole thing out but um we kind of had a plan of like hey you know what we're just gonna pitch to a bunch of people so we ended up pitching to quite a few studios you know just kind of like yeah yeah and and you know like if anybody's familiar with the pitching process well, you know, I, and i'm not so you know yeah <laughs> and i'm not so to explain i mean explain to us that aren't you know, now, you know, just versed on the pitching process. Was it, okay, I have a, I have a in at Netflix or did you just, or all these other companies, or did you just call and say, Hey, you know, we'd like to, we have an idea. We just like to get in front of you and pitch it. Or did you have kind of somebody that was a champion on the inside that kind of helped you get yeah. inside? Well, so, you know, pitching, this is what I can say about about my experience pitching. You know, I came to LA. I want to say 2014. I think that's right. And my goal was like, oh, I have ideas that I want to pitch. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the ideas I think you showed an image for was was Mojo, and I was yeah. pitching that around because I was trying to get that done as a as a series um, or a feature. I was trying. I was trying to get that. I was trying to get it done basically. So I uh, came here and I pitched it. I was able to like, um, I think my first pitch, oh, I had a really good friend who made a connection for me. 
Um, and I went, I pitched at a couple places and it went really well. Um, they turned it down, uh, but they really liked me. They really liked the energy that I was bringing to the room and they really liked the project, the idea behind it. They just, sometimes it's like, and this is the thing with pitching. Sometimes it's all about timing. It's all about like, we're not looking for that type of content. Yeah. We like, we're looking for boys, comedy, like six to 12. Like there's, yeah. you know, like you got to know these things when you go to pitch. Um, but um, really from doing that, like I started pitching around a lot and I kind of developed a reputation, <laughs> uh, not to sound too uh, <laughs> <laughs> ominous, but like you, you just kind of get a reputation of like, oh, you know what? Like, I like this guy. He's got like, he's got interesting ideas. Yeah. Um, so that, that was one of the things that like really was able to like make it easier for me to like make some of those connections yeah. and same with my creative partner. He'd been pitching ideas around. So people were familiar with both of us and we both kind of had contacts who could make those connections for us. And then we got to a certain point where it's like, Oh, they know us. So like, I, I could literally say like email someone say like, Hey, I got something I really want to pitch you. Is that cool? Can we set up something? Yeah. yeah. That takes, that takes years, right? Yeah. Like years of building relationships and with people yeah. and, and making the context uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, Kind of, maybe you can dispel or confirm the the thing, but I mean, and I only get this from just kind of watching the back end of Pixar, you know, the Pixar thing. Is it, like I said, acting out storyboards that you present and just kind of going through the story, you know, really animating the story visually to the people that you're pitching to. Is that how it is? Or is it like sitting down in front of a table at a table and just, okay, here's the script of what we got. It varies a lot. I'll be honest with you. Like I pitch some, like a lot of different ideas. Sometimes I'll come into the room and I'll got, I'll have like a ton of illustrations, you know, and I'll like, I, I usually, you know, do presentations. I'm like, oh, this is our main character. Yeah. You know, and she loves, she loves candy bars and, and kicking ass and like, or whatever. And I'll kind of go through it. <laughs> um, or, I, or I've also gone into it, like, not really cold turkey, but like no images. Where, and I'm just kind of talking about the story. And if I'm doing that, Don, I'm kind of talking to you like, you know, oh, picture it's this. It's this world where like, you know, like everybody is like a robot. And, yeah. uh, and I try to like kind of pull you in by the cow the story you know um and it's funny because it's like i don't think that there's a magic bullet yeah a lot of it's like about timing and like i, I keep saying timing because like that was really a huge part of it um because there were sometimes like you would pitch something and you're like ah oh, like it's gone it's gone away and then you run into some, like i like for example with me there was an idea i pitched like ah oh, like I, i'm not gonna pitch it anymore I yeah think, and I, I literally ran into that same exact a year later. And she's like, hey, that idea. I, want you to pitch today. I was like, oh, snap. Okay, yeah. Let me dust yeah. it off there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, let me rewrite some of this stuff, you know. So. Uh, with um, my dad, the bounty hunter, did you have the characters first or did you kind of crap already have the idea of the story and then the characters kind of came you know, after you, you and your partner were kind of fleshing out the story of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think with us, like, it was, again, I say ping pong, because it was crazy. Like, it was literally like, boom, 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 like, we could kick it back and forth, you know. Like, it was pretty organic the way it came out. So, yeah. uh, sometimes I just believe in a muse, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where ideas, like, yeah. if someone has... Like a muse is like when your muse is walking around and they got a brick and on the brick there's an idea like <laughs> you hit your finger like oh snap because something it's crazy because sometimes full ideas is popping in your head and you're like yeah. where did that come from yeah so and I guess that's know. where it's great to have a partner that you yes. can like I said ping pong things back and yes. forth otherwise you'd just be kind of siloed in your yeah. own story. And you got someone who sniffs out the BS a little bit quicker, you know. And actually, there's something like that's super powerful, like about saying, like, "Oh man, this idea is gonna be dope." And then when shit, when it comes out of your mouth, you're like, "That sounds real. <laughs> that sounds real dumb." You know what I mean? Like, so like just having somebody to kind of like talk back and forth with it, it, it really lets you get through the ideas kind of quick, you know. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, man. And like I said, we've been uh, having such a great conversation. I'm going to throw this comment up from Mr. Darnell again. Uh, are you writing stories that go with the trends or or content studios are looking for, or do you just write stories you're interested in? That's a good question. Are you writing question. to the trends, or are you just creating stories that, like I said, are just something that – is in you that you just want to tell yeah i kind of write stuff that like hits me you know like oh like because i i believe that's like way the most powerful stuff it's like hey this idea came from something that resonated with me sometimes it could just be aligned like an idea is like hey you know a lot of crazy stuff was happening and then that inspires me to, like so that will be a trend but that's not on purpose that's just yeah. because you're that's going you it. being a creative individual reacting to the environment that yeah. you're in right yeah um, in for me, I just have a backlog, right? So it's like, I've got all these stories that I've came come up with over the years and then I'll kind of push certain stories and like, oh yeah, this story's going to do really well. I think because, um, I see, like, I see what's missing, you know, there's mm-hmm. pieces that's missing out, out in the world right now. I'm going to try to fill that, that piece, or I'll be like, oh, you know what? The time for this story is maybe not now. So like I got a backlog where I should be like, all right, I'll just kind of put this in the vault. I'll come back and I'll revisit that later. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and and to that point, I, I want to ask you because you know you're not a per se screenwriter, but you have stories. Right. Do you work with somebody once you have an idea? Do you work with a screenwriter or somebody that can formally kind of flesh it out in a script kind of format? Or do you already kind of have the the dialogue of what the characters are saying, and and you got a kind of good a good feel for that yourself? You know, I'm I think I, I might be a screenwriter now. I've written a bunch of scripts. Yeah. I, read, I, read, I read a I wrote a bunch of scripts for for the show, um, and I've I've written a bunch of specs, um, and but I, it's been awesome working with writers. Like you know. We had a writing room, of course, for, for our show. So, like, just being in contact with them and, and kind of seeing how they run things. But here's a here's the deal. Like, I've been storyboarding since, oh, 99? Yeah. You know? So, like, I've been reading scripts hmm. my whole career. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, like, and not only that, I'm reading scripts, I'm analyzing scripts so I can break them down into scenes so I can visually, rep- like, visually represent what's written on paper so i think all those years of doing that makes like you you kind of get the idea of like oh i know how like i know i know what a a script for animation should feel like Mm. right and not beyond that i think what would i want someone to hand me if i were going to board that scene and that's kind of how i write does that make sense yeah where i go like okay so like i'm going to write this so when I hand it off to that story artist, they'll be like, yep, it's going to be evocative. It's going to like help them like come up with like their ideas for the scene. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and like I said, this obviously <laughs> folks, this episode, it's just, went, went, went. I always say, I like to try and keep it to 45 minutes, but it just never does. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely want to be respectful for a, uh, uh, my guest time like I said I could go on and on and on and sit and talk it with Everett for about a ton of stuff uh, but I definitely want to respect his time um, one final question um, before we close it out if you could stand in front of your younger self mm-hmm. what would you what would you say if you had the opportunity uh, for a moment to stand in front of your younger self what would you say <laughs> um outside of buying two... outside of buy Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. Yeah. yeah. No, I would I would tell myself there's two well well I have very so a very specific thing I would say. That I would have a very first thing I would tell them tell myself is like um don't doubt that you can do what you can do because you can do it. You know what I mean? Like you can do it. If you put your mind to it, you can get it done. So don't doubt yourself when it comes to that. And the next thing I would tell myself is, <laughs> this is so specific, but, um, you know, finish the, finish those ideas, like, like, get, like, 
if you put an idea out to the world, finish it, bring it to its conclusion. Like, and that that's very specific meaning. Like, um, that there's a point where I was uh, writing a comic book, yeah. and I would tell myself like, you know what, bite the bullet, take take that time off. Like, you know, you can still work, but take the time to make that graphic novel and put it out into the world. Yeah. Um, because you get so much power from that, you get so much power from being able to put content into the world. Yeah. Even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't do great, like yeah. at the end of the day, you could pull like a graphic novel off your shelf, you know, and hold it up and say, like, "That's me. That's my story." I yeah. That out. Yeah. yeah. Like you say, completing something has such power in, in yeah. it as well. Uh, yeah, guys. Like I said, this has been such a great interview. Going to throw up these last couple of comments for uh, Everett to see. Mr. Jerry Bryce, great interview. Love the discussion regarding his creative visual and writing approach. Like I said, that he, I, I was expecting this. Great information <laughs> for sure. And like I said, that's why I'm so honored to, to learn and sit at his feet to to absorb all this stuff just like everybody else is i'm sitting absorbing all the information and taking it in because i too like i said have some ideas that i definitely would love to see the fruition mr raul dunkley all true there is so much to discuff way too much uh, to just get into within an hour, even a couple of hours. Like I said, I could sit and talk with uh, Everett for a long time, but uh, definitely, Everett, thank you so, so much. Um, one, again, I can't say thank you enough for connecting with me in the first place. Yeah. Two, like I said, and like I told you, I, I consider us friends and just so honored and, and excited seeing the things that are coming from you and and just where you're going from this point i'm like i said i can't say it enough um and just like i said look forward to the you know the time when there's an opportunity for us to work together on something for sure but uh just can't wait till uh my dad the bounty hunter comes out Guys, like I said, he's got another one, Maya and the Three. That'll be coming out uh, in the next few months from Netflix. So it's got a lot of great stuff coming out for sure that you definitely want to uh, keep an eye out for. Um, and again, one other thing I would say, like definitely check out. I just I directed um, a, a, a short for We the People on Netflix. We the um, people. With a I bunch of, that. I haven't seen it, but I mean, I've yeah, seen it on Netflix, it but I, I didn't know you directed. Okay, we'll have to watch. That. I directed one of those episodes. Okay, so. really? There's a lot of great directors, like Peter Ramsey directed one, like yeah. Trisha Gum. There's a lot of great directors. Directed, okay, so we we'll have to check that definitely out. Check that out. We're, and it's going to be, like I said, all this stuff is going to be in the show notes on the YouTube channel. So definitely make sure that uh, you check it out there uh, again. Uh, make sure that uh, you get connected uh, with Everett on all his uh, channels. I want to make sure I get this in here. Uh, hey, where did it go? Okay. I had it here. I know I had it here. Please. Yeah, I know I had it here. All his contact information. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Yeah. Make sure you connect with every, uh, you know, so like I said, I get so engrossed, I just lose it. Like I said, <laughs> check out his website, edowdy.com, bookofmojo.com. You can find him on Instagram at edogdowning. Uh, also on Twitter as well, Mr. Scribbles. Like I said, you definitely want to go through Netflix because he's got obviously a lot of stuff on Netflix that he's doing and coming out. So, again, all this stuff will be uh, on the show notes. Um, and like I said before, Everett, I'm just, uh, thank you so much for being my friend and thank you so much for making The Color of Motion such a uh, you know, engaging show, and this is such an engaging episode. Like I said, I'm just, I was super excited and just super grateful that you took the time out of your busy schedule 
to uh, grace us with your knowledge and your your presence. Well, I'm glad we got a chance to do it, Don. I know mean, we've been talking about doing it for a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah, we Thank got. Thank you so much. And, and definitely, like I said, plan on having uh, Everett back on as things come out. Um, they're helping to promote all the stuff that he's working on. Um, so everybody, never fear. He will be back on uh, at some point uh, in time. Uh, again, Everett, uh, if you could hang out for just – a quick second in the green room while I close this out. Um, That's good. Uh, and thank you uh, properly. But everybody, help me uh, in thanking Everett Downey for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, what can I say? This was... A great episode. Like I said, the best, one of the best episodes, like I said. And I could tell by how everybody enjoyed the conversation. Obviously, uh, a lot of people follow Everett so uh, and want to hear what he's got to say. So, I, like I said, I can't, I can't disagree with you. I want to, I want to hear what he's got to say and see what he's got going on as well. Again, make sure that uh, you jump over to uh, the YouTube page to see all the show notes, um, get all the information. Uh, of course, you can, uh, like I said, connect with me on uh, all my social channels: YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Behance. Email me because I definitely want to hear from you from as well. Again, if you are one of those ones that loves to check out the show from LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, I do always highly recommend people go to the YouTube channel, uh, subscribe, hit the bell notification, comment on the episodes because that definitely helps uh, the channel in the episode, you know, gain traction. If you comment, give a thumbs up. Uh, but you can uh, find the channel at youtube.com slash non Definitely want you to uh, get engaged there as well. Um, like I said, make sure that you get plugged into the uh, Facebook group. Uh, again, this is the last episode that will be aired on my personal page and moving forward uh, starting next month. Uh, if you are one of those ones that enjoys watching it on Facebook, you'll only be able to watch it uh, in the Color of Motion group community. So make sure that you get plugged in there if you are one of those Facebook viewers because uh, I don't want you to miss out uh, for sure. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, next week, uh, like I said, it is the holiday weekend. Plus, it's my birthday week. So, uh, we won't be doing a live show. I'll be doing a rebroadcast of one of my, probably another one of my favorite episodes. Or I may be doing a compilation of a few episodes. But it will be, uh, it won't be a a live show since it's the holiday weekend and a lot of people will probably be traveling um, and spending time with family and friends. Uh, but after that, the week of the 11th, we got another great guest, Mr. Brian Williams, owner and comic book writer with Soul Hammer Comics. I'm telling you, uh, I've had a chance to read uh, a couple of his title. Um, so, uh, I got them right here. Lucia, uh, this one's a cool one. Harlem Shadow, great comic book, great comic book. And Lucius Hammer, he sent me some great comic books, great stories, some new, uh, New episodes or, or new uh, additions are coming out. So I'm looking forward to having him on the show, talking about all the new stuff. He's created some amazing worlds with the characters, uh, the black superhero characters that he has created. So you definitely don't want to miss that. That is going to be uh, September 11th. Like I said, next week, uh, 
Well, you want to tune in, even though it's going to be a rebroadcast and it's going to be another great, you'll be able to catch up on another great episode. Uh, but the 11th is when Mr. Brian uh, Williams will be on, and it's going to be a great show for sure. Again, everybody, I can't thank you enough for joining me for this episode. It went a little longer than I had anticipated, but like I said, uh, I don't think uh, my guests mind it too much, uh, but hopefully. Uh, like I said, it was a great episode. You guys showed up as uh, always. I want to thank you uh, for always uh, supporting the show and making it such a great show for sure. With that, make sure you tune in next week. Have a great rest of the week. Uh, great rest of the weekend. Also, uh, I look forward to seeing you on the 11th. But, uh, again, what can I say? It was a great show. I thank you for tuning in. Thank you for always supporting the show um, and just making the color of motion uh, the best that it could be. To all the guests, to all the viewers, I can't thank you enough. With that, uh, I will see you next week. Well, I won't see you, but, you know, make sure you tune in. Same bat time, same bat channel, because it's going to be a great episode. Have a great one, everyone. <laughs>